Hey, what is up everyone? It's Josh here again with another video. So recently, I needed to make a new cable for my printer and realized that I really never made a tutorial video using the USB Type-B connector. So in this one, we'll be making this USB-A to USB Type-B cable uh, in this video. Also, I just want to take a quick moment before the video to shout out a subscriber named John. He said what's up to me at a Fanime anime convention in San Jose. I never thought that people would ever notice me from these videos, so really, I thank you for the encouragement to keep making videos like this. With that being said, I hope this video is helpful for some of you out there, and uh, let's make one of these USB Type-B cables. Alright, so today we're working with some USB 2.0 spec cable. We're going to be using some sleeving, including our dark purple tech flex. This is 1 8th of an inch in dark purple color. And we'll be using some 550 paracord with this purple and blue. Next off, we have the start of a show, the USB Type-B connector. I typically see this connector with printers and MIDI devices. Next, we have our USB Type-A connector. This is going to be used for your host, which could be your computer or your laptop. And lastly, we have some heat shrink purple color to uh, keep everything together. In this next segment, we'll be going ahead and fast forward through the sleeving process of the cable. If you want to learn more about custom sleeved USB cables, definitely check out the video in the top corner. Next off, I'm going to go ahead and remove the outer sleeving, just a little bit of it to prepare our cable to be stripped. And I'm going to use our pliers to gently yet aggressively remove the outer jacket, as well as removing the shielding for the wires to be exposed. As we get prepared to solder our cable together, I'm going to go ahead and start sizing up how much wire we actually need from our cable to solder it onto our connector. So here I have the type B connector, just finding out where it's going to be placed on the cable. So once it's all soldered in, we have a good place of where we're going to crimp it. We're going to do the same thing with the USB-A side as well. Next off, we're going to go ahead and expose enough of the conductive part of the wires to solder onto our connectors. Now we are finally on to the soldering portion of this video. We're going to start with our USB Type-B connector. And always, first off, I like to tin each side of the connectors. So each of the little pads, add a little solder to it. And also the exposed wires to make sure that once we put them together, we have some solder on both sides and will make a really easy connection for us as we continue through this process. There should be a diagram that we'll be using for the pinout in the top right of the video. So if you're using similar connectors as I am, make sure to follow along. Not gonna lie, before putting together this video, I had to make a few practice cables using the USB Type-B connector. The pinout is quite a bit different in orientation than the USB-C to USB-A cables I typically make. So there's two defining characteristics that I noticed just with the connector itself. First off, the top part, there's a little like plateau side. So there's a little like, I call it like a rooftop house. And the bottom, there's a little divot, like a little like river. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> Uh, a little cavity in there so basically for the power side or the vcc side i put on top of house and then the ground side is going to be on the ground floor of the house as i figuratively put it to be on the bottom with the um the cavity that's there And of course, we have to do the other side as well, the USB-A. Probably done hundreds if not thousands of these, so... Using the same pinout as displayed on the top right of the video. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the same process of tuning our individual contact points on the connector as well as adding some solder to the exposed wires before soldering everything together. Right after all the soldering is finished with this cable, this is the time I like to test the cable to make sure it's functional. Whether you have a USB cable tester or have a device around to test the cable with, it's a good time to try it out to make sure it works before we put the housings onto the cable. Now that all the soldering is done, we can finally go ahead and put the housings on the connectors. But before doing that, I really like to add adhesive. It just makes these cables last so much longer. Honestly, since I started doing this, I've had cables I've been using for years that haven't broken on me yet. So really some good adhesive is a good thing to add before putting everything together. The USB type B side, the orientation of how the shell fits in, it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, the shape just fits in like, you know, one of those kids toys with like the stars and circles and the crimp, you know, just make sure that you have a nice pair of pliers and make sure to primp it as circular around the cable as possible. And for the USB-A side, you know, as well, we're going to add some adhesive and do the same thing we can to make sure that we crimp the connector with its housing on to make sure it's really nice and secure and as even as possible. The last thing I'll be doing to complete our cable today is using this purple heat shrink. Partially as an aesthetic choice, but also really does help durability as these cables bend around. For the USB Type-B side, I found this little mark on the shell I like to line up the heat shrink with. It does give it enough clearance just to plug into about just anything. And I'm going to get my heat gun and apply quite a bit of heat to it while also not trying to apply too much heat to the sleeving because it may melt if it is heated too thoroughly. We're gonna make this look nice and even and uh, it's gonna look pretty clean once we get this heat shrink nicely applied to our cable. And of course we gotta do this with the USB-A side as well. Gonna hop it in, there's this little like indentation on the USB-A type side. I like to have it just a little below that and we're going to apply quite a bit of heat again to make sure we have a nice and clean heat shrink applied to our cable and make sure it looks pretty clean and uh, useful for us for hopefully many years to come. And there we have it folks, we have our completed USB type B to USB A cable completed. Thanks for watching the video, if you liked it consider subscribing to the channel and maybe comment what other cables you might want to see on this channel in the future. Thanks again for watching and uh, make wise choices.